why would anybody expect anything from somebody that they're not actually doing themselves? Okay? Some of you have to understand that as parents. You can't expect things of your children that you're not willing to do. You can't expect things of your employees that you're not willing to do. Anything that you expect of people, you should be willing to do. And so, if he expects us to be good, well, we learn from Scripture that's because he is good. He expects us to be trustworthy. We're starting to see all these verses that talk about he is trustworthy, even though we've also seen example after example of example of him, be, of him being good and being trustworthy, right? That in him you were enriched in all, in every word and all knowledge, as the witness of Messiah was confirmed in you. So, that, oh, the witness of Messiah was, how would the witness be confirmed? Through your actions, your behavior, your choices. Because a lot of people claim to be of Messiah and then we watch what they do and we go, mm, maybe not. Because it should be visually obvious, all right? He's saying here, it's confirmed in you. Not because you were a little baby in a Catholic church and you had a confirmation, or whatever nonsense that was, okay? Let's go sprinkle some water on your head and whatever, all right? All right, no, this is, you confirmed that this is a reality in your life by your choices, behavior, and actions, okay? Which is belief manifested in the 3D world. You do things. He says that there be no divisions among you. What's divisions? Let's take the word and just split it up real simply. Die, which is more than one vision, okay? Or a split vision. So there can't be more than one vision in the body. There should not be more than one vision in the body. And by the way, the vision is given to the leader who then shares it with the rest. Moses was given the vision. When I say the vision, I'm not saying like he had a dream. In that. I'm saying he was given the insight to know where everybody was going or what they were supposed to do, what they weren't supposed to do, whatever. That understanding was given to the leader. And the leader then shared it with everybody else, who then either chose to embrace it. But what do we see happening even with Moshe? You see a lot of division. You, right, you are exactly where your actions and choices, really your choices would lead to actions, over your whole life to this point have gotten you. Don't blame this person and that person. And the, you are where your choices have gotten you, okay? Sure, you may have been some terrible things happened to you, but unless it happened yesterday, and that's why you're where you are, it's how you reacted to those things that happened 30 years ago. And what you've done since then have gotten you where you are now, which means you can also change your choices and end up in a different place. Emotionally, financially, relationally, whatever. But you are in a place that's a result of your choices. That's what scripture tells you too. The place you wanna be, which is in the forever with the king, your choices are what gets you there or not. Your choices are what you're gonna be judged on. He's trustworthy not to put you through something you can't handle. Doesn't matter if you believe you can handle it or not. You have to believe that he believes you can handle it or he wouldn't have put you through it. He says, not beyond what you're able, but with the trial shall also make the way of escape, enabling you to bear it. So the way of escape. So a way of escape is not just talking, the way, talking about getting out of the trial itself but dealing with the emotional part of being in the trial. Maybe the way of escape is coming to the leadership and getting the calm you need to go through the trial, the strength you need to go through the trial. Maybe it's actually, you're not gonna actually get out of the trial, but now you have an escape from the, the response that you're having to the trial. Does that make any sense to anybody? I don't want you to only think this verse, I'm not saying it doesn't mean it. Like, I'm not saying it doesn't mean that he might actually provide a way to get out of the problem. But sometimes he's gonna let you go through the whole thing till it's over, but the escape is about how you're handling it. All of our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were immersed into Moshe, in the cloud and in the sea. What do you mean immersed into Moshe? In other words, Moshe represents the covenant. Moshe represents the Torah. They were all immersed into that vertical structure, okay? Moshe being, at that point, the representative of the Most High, all right? And that's why the fivefold's important. Those 
are, are, are men that represent the Most High in those roles. You are supposed to look for them. Just, just because somebody has a microphone and a YouTube channel doesn't mean that they represent the Most High, no matter what they claim. You have to go and vet that. How do you vet that? You prayerfully listen and ask, Father, is that the right stuff? Is that person representing you correctly? Is that person saying what needs to be said? Brought you across the wilderness, parted the sea, brought you to Sinai. I mean, all these things they did for you, gave you water out of the rock, gave you manna out of the sky, right? Fed you. What do I have to do to convince you of who I am and what I am that you finally start trusting me? And so... For all of you that have this problem, you're going to really need to work on it. What they're doing is, you see, the fear turning into a panic. And the panic is a manifestation of belief that it's not going to go well. It's already going wrong. It can't be, you know, whatever. You're panicking. So you're not just afraid something might happen. You're already panicking, convinced it's going to go badly. You're already convinced we're going to, we're going to die. That's what they said. Why would you bring us out here to die? They were convinced they were going to die. Joshua and Caleb were convinced they were going to live. So interestingly, he's connecting idolatry to their partying. Now, it's not that partying is idolatry. They had chosen to get excited about something that wasn't him. Okay, they made this calf, and they called it him, right? They said this calf is Yahweh, all right? So... They got excited about what they decided he is. What they decided he represents him and, and is about him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they partied and got excited and danced around. Boy, you can see this in some charismatic places, can't you? They're rolling around, screaming and yelling and dancing in the aisles about something that's not actually him. Doesn't represent him correctly. Oh, they're calling it him. They think it's about him. And they're partying it up real good. And he calls that idolatry. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is praised. So what's it talking about? He says, look, if people are going to attack you for doing what you know, Torah requires and belief in Messiah, the, you know, being that messianic Torah observant Israelite that you're supposed to be, I mean, the name of our organization is not just some random name. I think it describes what we are. Okay, so I'm not saying, when I say that, I'm not saying being a part of this organization. I said, but you believe in Messiah, you're Torah observant, you're covenanted, and you understand that makes you from scriptural base Israel, based on you know scriptural basis. He says, so if you're suffering because of that, he says, Elohim is being blasphemed by them, but you're being honored by, uh, he sees it in an honoring way. How you handle it, now that depends on how you handle it. If you don't handle it right, you're gonna be blaspheming him and so are they. In other words, every time you go through a trial, if you handle it in belief, what belief? That Elohim isn't going to put you through anything that you can't handle. Right? All these things tie together. Here a little, there a little, right? Verse upon verse, line upon line. And so he's saying, you should already know these things. Now we've heard Peter talk about it. We heard Paul talk about it. We heard James talk about it. Same thing. It's about developing your endurance. Because life has a never-ending you know, parade of trials. <laughs> okay? It's one after the next. Now, there's some times in between, but they don't ever go away completely. You're going to keep having them because they're building endurance. <laughs>